Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the YouTube Creator Sub Podcast. This is the conversation piece of the show. We are joined today by Valentin. Valentin is a full-time creator and community builder who wants to help more creatives achieve their dreams. He has a rich background in filmmaking, having spent eight years in New York before returning to Vienna, Austria. He is also the moderator for Colin and Samir's subreddit and Matt Diavella's slow growth community, as well as a passionate content creator on his own channels. The channel I want to talk about as we get started today is the one called Cardboard Cleric. Cardboard, Cardboard Cleric is a YouTube channel uh, about D&D or Dungeons and Dragons and crafting. Uh, thousands of subscribers on that channel, a very, very tight-knit community, uh, and we'll definitely talk about that. But he's also going to be launching another YouTube channel soon, and we're going to be talking about that process as well. Valentin, how are you doing today? Great. I'm doing really good. I'm really excited to chat with you and dive Absolutely. into all these topics. Absolutely. So let's just go ahead and, and do it. Now, the Cardboard Cleric YouTube channel, um, how did that come to be? What made you decide to take the leap into YouTube? Right. The, that channel in particular was really came out of COVID. I was just stuck at home and I love to play D&D and I had nothing better to do. Right. So I just made a handful of videos and uh, somehow they took off. So there was no plan actually behind that. That is amazing. That is amazing. And you had no experience kind of going into this with YouTube before that. Not with YouTube. So my professional background is in filmmaking. So I know the cameras, the lights, all the technical aspect of it. But really having a presence on social media or YouTube, that was all new to me. And you obviously have experience with the community building aspect of things, being a moderator over on a very popular subreddit, uh, as well as a very popular group with the Matt Dio Diavella stuff. So how did all of that come to be? Were you just part of those groups as as kind of uh, not a bystander, but a community member and then just kind of got promoted up to community leader? Kind of. So when I started to see some success with the YouTube videos, I kind of made a decision to go deeper into it to like explore this as as an outlet for my creativity and possibly a business venture. So I've been following Matt for years now, and I kind of knew he was having a course. And so the moment it launched, I was just all in. And the really great aspect about that was just that it had a bunch of people there that we could chat with, that we could share experiences with, that we could just like get excited about YouTube. And for me, this community in particular replaced social media. So instead in the morning, check an Instagram or whatever, I was just checking the slow growth community. So I was just like super active. I just knew what was going on. And eventually that turned into me becoming a moderator and taking care of the community and really getting me excited about this whole community topic. So that that really is kind of the the crux of what I want to talk about today about community mm -hmm. building on YouTube because you can be as talented as you want at creating videos, but if you don't know how to create and kind of foster a community around your YouTube channel, um, now obviously there's certain channels that you know lend themselves to community better than others. Uh, for instance, my YouTube channel where I just do tutorials and how-to content for technology. Uh, the community that I'm building is around this podcast, right? But for my yeah. YouTube channel, not as much. But for most people on YouTube, being able to build and foster a community is really integral uh, integral to what they want to do to kind of continue to grow their channel. So what are some things that you've learned um, kind of along the way in these groups? Give us, you know, a couple of the two, three most important things that you've learned about building a community and how they translate to YouTube. Sure. So first of all, I want to kind of tack on to that because a lot of people think they have an audience and therefore they have a community, mm -hmm. but those are two very separate things, right? To me, a community means that you have communication in all directions. It's not just creator to the audience, but it's also audience to audience and audience to the creator. And for me, really the, the main takeaway, if there's anything I, I can stand by is that to me, community is the most important factor to having a long life as a creator. 
to really getting started with that and to enjoy the journey. That's that's the most important part for me. And then secondly, I think community is just really good at, um, how do you say this? Like create content, but obviously they're not like making the videos for you, but they can inspire the videos that you're making. They can give you really, really good feedback on the content that you're making. And so it just becomes this flywheel of you becoming better, the community enjoying the content more, and it just keeps going and going and going. It, it really does. And if someone is listening to this podcast and they're thinking to themselves, well, do I have a community or I'd like to build or grow or foster a community better? What are some tips and pointers that you can give them? Because being a part of that, uh, that group that you're a part of and the subreddit that you're moderator for, uh, you obviously see what works and what doesn't. How can one build a community? And I want to add a uh, kind of a, a part B to that question. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that you have to have a million subscribers? Like, is there a number metric that they have to reach? Like, what is what does that equate to? Go ahead and answer that. I know that was a lot to throw at you, but yeah. uh, but I, I feel very confident you can give us the give us the yeah, answer here. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go with the second part of that question first. Like you don't need a large audience to have a community straight up. Um, I'm part of many communities. Some are a handful of people. Some are thousands of people. I like to think of it as a physical space, right? You have cities, you have villages, you have classrooms, you have co-working spaces. All of those things are communities. So you can get started very, very small and I think the most important part for that to, to happen is that you have to provide a space. The comment section on YouTube or on Instagram are not a community space, in my view, at least, right? If you have a Reddit, if you have a Discord, if you have some other private community where people can join together and have a conversation with each other, now that is where community starts. And I think to before you just open up, you know, whatever space is, is best for you, I think the most important thing is to think about your why, like why do you even want a community and what is the purpose of it? Okay, great answer. I agree with that. What are, what are, what are your the purpose of, of the community? Uh, oftentimes, creators are very money-minded and they yes. think of it at a monetary monetary type of reason as to why they'd want a community. You being able to make money from your community should be the after effect of building the community, right? You should never Absolutely. build the community to make money. But by fostering the community, whether it be on YouTube or elsewhere, <clears throat> by building that trust, interacting with those people, getting being transparent with them, you will in turn have them subscribe to your newsletter, subscribe to your YouTube channel, click on your affiliate links, uh, go and support exactly. your sponsors, right? These are things that are going to happen in turn of having a community. Now, I have a lot of people, speaking of community, I have a, 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 a I call it premium, it only costs five bucks to be a part of it, but I have a premium Discord community, which is a mm -hmm. just a, a, an application that allows people to go and talk like you would in forums or Facebook groups or whatever it may be. And we're about 115 strong. Um, there are some things that I'd like to improve about that community, but I have people in that group asking me, where do I go? How do I do this? They want to facilitate a community they, they say, do I do Patreon? Do I do Facebook? They've tried to do Discord. What are some recommendations outside of YouTube? Now, for people who don't mm -hmm. know the topic of your the main channel, the Cardboard Cleric, Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, that is a, a role-playing game played. Um, it's, it's got an acronym. What's the acronym? It's not CRPG. &D. It's, it's oh, like TTRPG. So TTRPG, it's like the right. Term. Yeah. So, so you sit at a table, you, you, know, you have a dungeon map, you get the whole nine, right? So community really is at the center of what D&D &D is, right? That's the whole reason of, of playing D&D. &D. So where do you go? Where should these people go who want to foster a community, who want to um, find a place for their community members to go? What are some pointers and some some things you can kind of tell them today uh, to, to go to, to to grow their communities? It's always where do you like to 
be? What space do you enjoy? Um, ask me a couple months ago, and I would have said flat out, Reddit is the best way to start a community. Now, Reddit has a bunch of things happening right now that might change that, right? Um, Discord is, is also a great place to start. It's more chat-based, so there's less of an archive function. But really, all you got to do is like provide a space where people can talk. If that is uh, one of those options, the first community I started locally happened on WhatsApp, right? That's that's also perfectly fine. So there's no need to go buy some expensive software or anything like that. It just needs to have very basic chat function and enable people to talk with each other. Yes. Uh, so give examples of these places. Where are outside or exterior locations that people can go to foster communities? Just list just list them out, whether it be Discord or WhatsApp or any of those places. What are other places that you've seen uh, kind of work really well? Okay. Yeah, I mean, places where you can build community is Reddit, Discord. You can do it on WhatsApp. You can have just monthly meetups on a Zoom call or in a cafe around the corner. I think all of those are great places to start. Would you recommend starting the community and bringing everyone together let's just use facebook for example into a facebook group and then after over time turn that into a premium group of people who are really bought in and they just for instance for my group it's youtube creators talking about youtube stuff and creator stuff um so five dollars for them that's a no-brainer right and we also have a, a, a monthly uh mastermind call on zoom for those who want to mm -hmm. attend so that's kind of what i'm pitching um, how, how would you, what format would you recommend they start with and, and kind of go to, to possibly make money from the community? Right. That's the, you're hitting on, on a really important topic there because to build a community that's thriving, there needs to be a good vibe, right? And if you just invite everybody, it usually turns to chaos and nobody really enjoys it. So yes. you got to have some way of, filtering out just just random bystanders if you want um honestly the there is no like simple answer to this right um what you're doing with gating it financially is a really good way to make sure that people who really want to join join and others don't but that that makes sense in your context right there's there's a business behind it people make money from it that's all good if if it comes to, I don't know, gardening or something, maybe that is something you don't want to uh, block off, right? Um, but I can I also, say something? Yes, I also think that, you know, you think of YouTube as the catalyst. In order to have a yeah. community, you have to have a following, yes. right? So in order to build a community, you need a following. And whether it be what Valentin's doing on YouTube with the Cardboard Cleric, uh, you know, for instance, let's use that for example. He had a uh, following of people who followed him for D and D and handcrafted stuff uh, over on YouTube, and he can take that following and foster a very active community. So, let's say your following is ten thousand subscribers on YouTube. Your community that interact with each other on a daily or weekly basis may only be two hundred and fifty people or two hundred people, right? But you could yeah. either put a, a premium monetary gate on that, uh, or you can put a couple of roadblocks in the way. They need to subscribe to your email newsletter to be a part of the group. Um, there are so many ways that you can cut the following down into a community. Okay, Don't expect all 10,000 YouTube subscribers to immediately go over to you. Because there's going to be like random like teenagers who can't even have access to these premium groups. There's going to be the the scammers, the trolls. You don't want all those people. You've got to find a way. If you know those kind of little sifters you use when you're cooking stuff, um, you know, and it kind of filters out the bad stuff but keeps the good stuff right. That's kind of what you want with your community. Am I am I right? Exactly. Yeah. You got to find a way to filter out who really is like your your top fan, right? Who really enjoys what you're making and wants to contribute back to that. Absolutely. Uh, now with the cardboard cleric, you mentioned it kind of was a, a COVID birthed uh, venture, which a lot of people I've had on this podcast, that is the case. 
um, that, which, which is funny. We're going to see a lot of very popular YouTube channels that were, that were uh, kind of uh, originated from people just boredom, right? And, and, and yeah. lockdown. Um, so you play d d It's a hobby of yours, a passion of yours. Um, what were a few things that you learned early on because you grew that channel very quickly? There are very few channels that have, uh, you know, five, six, seven thousand subscribers with less than a hundred videos, and you did it in less than 50. Um, so you obviously have something going for you. So, what are a couple of things that you learned early on and kind of into where you are now that you implemented that you would attribute to your success on the channel? So first of all, the, the biggest takeaway that I've gotten from that channel is that videos don't necessarily take off when you upload them, right? My most popular video really grew over time and had a huge spike a year after I published it. So if it doesn't happen on the first day in the first 24 hours, it's all good. Um, the second thing for anybody starting out what I did was I just made content for myself. That means I had a problem. I was a D and D player with a problem and I tried to fix it. Right. By that metric, there are other people out there who have the same problem and are going to be looking to solve this. And this is where my content comes in. Yes. And as far as like the branding and the thumbnails, um, what were some things that you did to make sure, cause you know, your thumbnails look really good. Uh, your Thanks. most popular video, almost half a million views, uh, it says a better D and D character sheet. Um, and so with that being the case, what were some things that you implemented with the branding and thumbnails that kind of helped you? Right. Um, so one thing I did early on was this daily upload experiment. I called it 28 days of D and D where I just like made one video every day and, this channel in particular, I don't show my face. It's usually just my hands or voiceover. And what I learned for the thumbnails, even though I can't put my face on there, I do want some kind of human element that really makes a difference. And it needs to have some depth to it. That's the best way I can I can describe that. Yes, it. I, I, I agree completely with what you're saying. When you go to your channel, look at your thumbnails. Uh, you can just you can see you really trying to do that, whether it be your hand kind of at the foreground in the foreground and then kind yeah. of in the background, uh, some D and D paraphernalia and, and some stuff around. So the depth does add a little bit of pop to the thumbnail uh, for sure. What did you learn about titles and descriptions and SEO? Uh, and, and you talked about you know YouTube videos uh, not taking off for those are those are and I say this a lot. Those are some of my favorite videos. Like I'll get a spike in my real-time views on my analytics on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, one of my old videos is taken off. Let me go figure out which yeah. one it is. And I'll go in there and I'll see which one it is. And it might be a video I did like 14, 16, 18 months ago. And I'm like, I knew you were a good one. I knew you were, <laughs> right? So um, yeah. what'd you learn about the SEO side uh, of YouTube and kind of how to help make your videos rank better? Um that most popular video of mine with the better character sheet is one where I really heavily researched actually like what is the specific words that people use to search for character sheets because there's variations, right? And so digging a little bit into Google Trends or like tools like TubeBuddy or something can be very, very worth it if it is a topic that people actively search for. If it's a more lifestyle topic, a more evergreen topic, then search is less relevant to me. Um, overall, I think titles are the hardest part of YouTube. Getting a good title that is not clickbait, that encapsulates what you're about to show, that is interesting to people and captivating, ooh, it's hard. And kind of... You also have to kind of be on the edge. You said, you know, that's not clickbait. It has to be so close to clickbait, right? Because if you don't, you're, it's never going to get seen. It's never going to get clicked on, right? You've got to really kind of uh, go bump the, the as close as you yeah. can to not being clickbait. It needs to be very informative about what the video is. It needs to encapsulate that, like you said, but also it needs to make people want to click. And so you kind of got to balance those two things. And that's actually a really important part for me. Like 
you can very easily achieve that that edge that you're talking about by going negative, right? By by the classic "don't do this" or "this is a scam" or you know all this like negative headline. But I try to be positive and like just put good vibes out there. And mm-hmm. reaching that that edge with positive headlines is even trickier. So people do this with tech tutorials, which is what I do. You would think, oh, really? They do that? Yes, they do. And I'll explain it just briefly. So instead of doing like, let's just say, how to um, get your video and audio working in Zoom, right? Let's just say that's a simple tutorial sure. video that you're doing, right? People have started in my space. They'll title it this way. I will fix all your Zoom problems, audio and video, yeah. right? So they're saying that they will, uh, they, they're guaranteeing a fix, fix to problem, colon, and then the video title. They're trying to find a way to get above. Or another one is um, how to set up a, your Zoom call in 60 seconds. So now they're, they're going towards the time aspect of what it is. So, oh, now, now I want you to click because you're a busy human your time is valuable. Click on my video because I'm going to get you to where you want to go sooner than all the other videos. And then lastly, this one is great is everybody loves listicles, right? They love top tens, right? They'll say the top seven problems that you're having with your zoom call or something of that nature. Um, And none of these things are necessarily clickbait. And yes, they are about what the video is, but they've really found alternate ways to title a video to make people want to click, right? That may stand out from my video that just titled how to set up your audio and video in Zoom, right? Those are things that people are doing to get people to click. Let's talk about monetization for a minute. Let's talk about money. How are you making money from the channel? uh, And kind of how would you like to make money from the channel going forward? So the funny thing is I made money with the Cardboard Cleric channel pretty much from the get-go. Wow, Uh, okay, explain that. before... Yeah, before there was even a thousand subscriber on it, simply by offering a digital download completely for free. The only thing, there's an option to donate and that's a character sheet and people love it. And some people are happy to donate money to that. And you really don't need an audience for that to to work. Now, in the meantime, I have been monetized on the channel, but... I'm in a very special situation or very different situation than um, I think most of your guests because I'm over here in Europe and the last year and a half actually has been completely financed by government grants. And so this is this is this allows me to build a business uh, without worrying too much about sponsors and advertising. Yes, it does allow you see, I knew that something like that was going on. I haven't had a guest on actually openly talk about that. But holy cow, the freedom that that must give you to be able to go for one of these ventures is amazing. But uh, let's let's go back to what you said about the digital download. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a lady come on here a couple of months ago. She was in the crafting space. And she was making, I mean, I don't want to say ungodly money, but I mean, it was, we're talking 10, 12, 14, $15,000 a month, right? Um, and she wasn't even optimizing it. Like I wanted to get on a call with her and tell her, hey, you make a couple of these tweaks that I tell you, you're talking, you're making twenty, twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 a month in, in, in just no time. And all she was doing was offering these downloads. And then if people liked the the little uh, kind of sample or preview that they were working on, mm-hmm. they would purchase the premium design, right? And those designs could be anywhere from $10 to $50, $75, $100. $100. She was doing a ton of these. And it's all from her YouTube channel, right? So you take the YouTube channel. She's got like a quarter of a million subscribers, but only say 10, 12, 15,000 of those buy something on a monthly basis. That's the community, right? So we're getting back to fostering the following, turning it into a community. That's a big, big deal. Um, What are other ways that you'd like to monetize this channel in the future? This channel in particular is um, most of everything I give away for free. I'm just happy to support the community. It is all a community building exercise. And to me, community is very rarely the product, right? Now, what I am working on is some 
premium products because everything is just on a donation basis. But that there are a couple of things in the works that will be just uh, a certain amount from the get go. Um, like I said, I'm not too worried right now about finding sponsored anything on this channel because it's just it's it's a very crowded space, and I want to make sure that I still provide value to the audience. I had some. Um, you can call it sponsored content. I got some like uh, deals to try out some some equipment, and I very quickly noticed that this is not what my audience appreciates. So I'm kind of dialing back on that and just making making their game more enjoyable. Right, and you you're you found the videos that work well, right? Yeah, like the ones that on your channel of you helping people make their D and D games better more enjoyable exactly. higher quality exactly. and you're not necessarily monetizing that now you can find little products like as you're doing these character sheets like you know you talk about some dice or something that that you know as you're as you're as you're going through and, and those things will work but you know what works for your channel and taking it forward now you're launching another channel um, That's right. talk, talk about that and some strategies that you're implementing now and some things that you've worked that you've worked on because a lot of people listening to this are thinking about launching or starting on YouTube. So talk about that process, why you're doing it, what it is, and some things that you're going to implement. Okay. So here's where I get really, really excited because I love D and D. It's super fun. But what I'm even more passionate about is connecting people with each other. I wouldn't be where I am now without having a solid group of people to connect with. And like we said earlier, like I used to live in the States. I, I really love the US. I mean, the whole creator economy is built on the advertising system and, and on all the, the good entertainment, right? But I'm missing this over here. Like I, I don't know a single channel that talks about the european creator economy or is trying to bring people together like i just got a message today asking me if i go to vidcon or, or vid summit sorry vid summit and i'm like i'd love to but that's like a week-long journey and a whole lot of money and you just don't have a conference like that in europe and it mm. sucks so what i'm doing now is combining everything i learned about youtube all the people i've met along the way and my filmmaking expertise into a new channel that is all about interesting creators over here, how they work differently, how their workspaces look like, their studios, and how they think about creating videos, audience, community, all those good things. And that's tell launching us, soon. Tell us the name of that channel. Yeah, that channel is called Orbit, a home for creators. And that's going to be out in September, hopefully. Yes, and it's Orbit for Creators. It's just Orbit on YouTube. Um, it's got a great looking launch page there on the channel. You got some shorts already uploaded on the video. Uh, I cannot wait to see what you what you do with that. There is an empty void in Europe for community events for creators, right? Yes. There, there really yes. isn't anything like Vid Summit or VidCon or something like that. Uh, I think they're probably someone listening to this. You, you got an idea, right? Uh, Valentine would definitely oh, love to help you and support you along that journey. Uh, and so I think that is, that's really cool. What are, what are some of the the harder parts or the hardest parts about starting a YouTube, a new YouTube channel? Uh, and how are you kind of getting over those hurdles? It's tough, right? Because when you're yeah. in the er early stages, there's so many things that you have to think about. Um, you know, who is yes. your target audience? What is your uh, content cadence going to be? So the biggest problem that I see new creators face is the topic of niche and what do I make videos about? Right. That is that question I hear all the time. And personally, I think you should worry less about that and think more about how you want to present stuff. Are you doing it in a documentary? Are you vlogging? Are you uh, uh, educating people, right? There's there's so many different ways to, to go about that. And this is, I think, a more interesting question than what to make videos about. Now, in my situation, the question I've been asking myself a lot is how do you launch a channel, right? Because there's a lot of people out there 
with expertise in any field and filmmaking. And nobody likes to wait. Nobody likes to make a hundred videos before one pops, right? So the question of how you get your first couple of videos out to an audience, I think is a really challenging one and a really interesting one. Yes, because you may have ideas, right? You have some ideas on what you think your channel is going to be about, but, but until you actually start creating and putting stuff out on the internet, on YouTube, you really don't know what will work and what will not work. And so finding exactly. what works for you, what's going to succeed, how to foster that community that we've talked about. So I love that. Um, in conclusion of this episode today, Valentine, I want to ask you, do you mind, you know, you're talking about connecting people together. Mm -hmm. As creators, so many people e email me and they say, Dusty, I'm so lonely or I'm so, um, I feel so excluded. Uh, you know, I hang around people and they have nine to fives or, you know, they have a nine to five as well, but they're also wanting to do this YouTube thing. And it seems so obtuse, right? So what are some things that, that some pointers and some things, some positive reinforcement you can give my audience about how to connect, connect with other YouTubers uh, and how to do it the right way? Yeah, I think the number one thing, it's super simple, but just message somebody. Like if you're not in a Discord already or in a Reddit or anything like that, just reach out to people that you genuinely enjoy watching. Um, maybe don't go for like the Tim Ferriss's of the world, right? Because they're very unlikely to respond to you. But if you just see some piece of content out there and it really resonates with them, let those people know. I'll be honest, 99% of all messages on the internet go unanswered, right? That's, that's a hard truth. But still, you got to write a message in order for somebody to connect with you. That, that's really the gist yes. of it. I absolutely agree and love this. This I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time because I haven't done a community building show or interview like this uh, in a long, long time. And it's so important as a YouTube creator to not feel secluded, to have the ability to foster a community because success on YouTube doesn't equate to necessarily a million subscribers or you know, 50,000 views a day. Oftentimes it equates to you finding your people uh, who want yes. to hear what you have to say. Um, and Absolutely. then taking those people, getting them in the same digital room and creating something magical where people can go and help each other uh, and talk about the thing that they love talking about, right? So you're taking the yeah. following and you're moving that into your nice little community. So do you have any final words before we close out today? Um, just look out for vibes is all I can say. If you feel like there's a connection, if you feel welcome in a space, just, just pour your heart into it. And if you found a community, even either you build it or somebody else build it, really spend time there and don't think of it as what can I get out of it? Just what can you give to that community? And I promise you, it will be so worth it for, for all your future endeavors. Absolutely. Valentin, you have been an amazing guest. I can't wait to see what you do with the new Orbit channel, uh, the Cardboard Claret going forward. You have a bright future, my friend. Thank you for joining me today. And we will talk to you next time. Awesome. Thank you so much.